Hi, my name is DJ. I'm with armsdirectory.com, and today I'm here with our close friends, Electronic Transfer. I'd like to introduce you to Sarah and Travis. How are you guys today? Great. Great. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. So I know all about you guys, love you guys, but I like our audience to understand a little about you guys. So beginning with that, why don't you tell us where did Electronic Transfer start and when? Electronic transfer was started by my dad, uh, Mike Knutson, and his business partner, Bob Donegan, back in 1989. Um, back then, they were selling old desktop terminals and <laughs> knuckle buster imprinters, uh, usually out of uh, ads in the back of magazines. Back when that was real popular, they'd put ads in there, and merchants would call them from mom and pa stores and they do that, and there was a lot of terminal leasing that was popular and been around a long time. And we just grew and grew until then. It's not very common for a sales office to be in business for 35 years without selling. It's very common within the banking industry to sell your portfolio. Um, Mike has always loved the business name and tried to continue to build the business. And hopefully someday Travis will end up taking it over. We'd like to continue to build on that. So... That's an interesting point. So what is the advantage of staying in business over that period of time? I would assume it would be better understanding, better depth of understanding mm -hmm. of your customers and whatnot. I think one of the advantages is um, certainly keeping the name going. You know, the name has been branded and with good feedback on that name. Yeah. So we know that you guys are from the firearms industry or that you service the firearms industry rather. Um, tell me a little bit about when and why you guys transitioned into the firearms industry. I find that very interesting. We started getting into the firearms industry pretty heavily uh, back in about 2013. Uh, we started getting calls from merchants uh, because we, we would approve everybody that had a business. Uh, we were getting calls from some of our gun dealers like uh, that were with other processors and they were telling us, yeah, our bank told us that they don't want to work with us anymore and we need to find a new processor to work with and we've got 30 days to get a new merchant account or they're going to shut us off. And come to find out it was due to Operation Choke Point, pressure from the Obama administration uh, onto the FDIC and they were telling banks that you guys need to make firearm merchants high risk and put it in the same category as like, porn and, and streaming adult content. And so, um, you know, all these gun dealers were getting closed merchant accounts all over the country. Um, and, you know, we're from the Northwest. We're avid hunters, very pro 2A. Uh, we're like, this isn't right. This isn't, this isn't something that should be being perpetrated by these banks. These guys aren't high risk. They're actually really low risk when you're looking at, you know, chargeback liability and things like that. Uh, from a financial perspective, gun dealers are great merchants to work with if mm -hmm. you're a processor like us. So, you know, we really started reaching out to that vertical um, and pursuing, you know, advertising and marketing, going after those merchants because, you know, we had two-way friendly banks that didn't mind it. You know, when most of the other country, the banks in the country were like, no, we don't want to work with these people. You know, we had partners that did. And that's, that's where we came in. And, and uh, that's been our primary focus since then. So Sarah can elaborate more on that, but um, yeah, we love our gun and ammo dealers and we believe in, you know, our second amendment rights mm -hmm. and we believe in, you know, no woke banks is like our, our motto right now. Cause you know, if, if you're a legitimate business and, and you're selling firearms or, or anything for that matter, you know, we're going to work with you and we're going to give you a good processing and the best customer service around. Awesome. Yeah. And just to piggyback on what Travis was saying, um, you know, ETI really embraced this industry about 15 years ago when the Obama administration came out and said, we're going to stop the sale of gun and ammo any way we can. And we knew that that was wrong. And to be honest, at first, I didn't I, I thought these merchants, maybe they had chargebacks, maybe they were doing something wrong, going against, you know, the rules. And so I didn't really believe it. But then we started seeing more and more um and as we get talking further, I'll, you know, how it's evolved, we can go into that as well. But it's not just gun and ammo anymore. 
Um, but anyway, it was wrong in the first place. And so we really just, we targeted that industry. And I'll tell you what, I've been in my industry 26 years. I would much rather process for a a, a good old boy, you know, an FFL dealer, somebody in the firearms industry. They're good people. There's hardly any chargebacks. Um, I don't have an FFL dealer that has no problem saying, you look weird. I'm not selling you a gun. They do everything by the book. So all this political stuff that's out there about FFL dealers, I want people to understand, you know, it's it's absolutely not true. Um, these guys believe in, you know, gun safety, everything. So I think that the blame is getting put on the wrong side of things. And um, I when I see something that's unjust or unfair, I mean, it, it makes me attracted to that even more. And I think that's where our passion is, because you wouldn't believe the nightmare stories that we get from these merchants. And, and you're like, no way. But what we've seen over the past um, 15 years is it's not just gun and ammo anymore. It's not just the pawn industry. Banks are literally going after conservative business as a whole. And unfortunately, you know, our country is very divided. But I do believe that we're at the time where stop giving your money to people that hate you. We need to band together, stick together. And we'll take on, you know, any, like Travis had said, any type of legal business. Um, we do specifically target those that, you know, probably have been canceled. Um, but we're super patriotic. You know, we want to help those that... We just want the good guys on our side and we want to be that. We want to provide a good service to the good guys. And um, like, for example, the firearms industry, I know their margins are super thin. You can't price gouge, you know, a, a, a firearms dealer, you know, they. And so with that being said, we do free terminals. We no startup costs, no annual fees. Our claim to fame is that we answer our phones. These guys just want someone that supports them and will help them. They're not necessarily the most tech savvy all the time, but that's okay. That's what we're there for. And building that relationship is probably the most important piece of, you know, my job with the merchant is I want them to trust that I'm going to steer them in the right direction that I have their back. Um, and I love it. I have the best job. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that all sounds really familiar because it's also the reason we started Arms Directory. Uh, most people don't understand that we started out with Lionheart Industries yes. as an importer, manufacturer, and a brand. And then there was the day in, I believe it was 2015, Black Friday, when at midnight, halfway through our Black Friday sale mm. for the weekend, our payment gateway got turned off yep. because the board didn't agree with our values yep. and they turned it off at midnight. I guess that's when the day ends, but it just really felt like um, a planned attack. Um, it lost us yep. an absolute fortune. A lot of our, uh, you know, yearly income came from was, that day. I bet. Yes. Yeah. We literally planned for it. And yep. so that was Gosh. painful. Yep. Um, so I absolutely did not understand the importance of people such as yourselves, you know, an electronic transfer before I had that experience. You always think this will never happen to me. Right. But when it happens to you and you count how many commas were in that number, you just think the, the, you it's almost the think end. it's impossible. Right. It, it, well, and, and what I love, one thing, and Travis can jump on this as well, is when a merchant calls us, it's the best feeling to be able to provide them something that they feel like they've been defeated, that they're never going to be able to get. Some of our merchants, you know, they get told no, 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 no. And then they finally find you know, us, they start searching for the right people and, and they're so thankful and it feels really good to be able to help somebody and stay in business. And, you know, they're a very loyal group of, of merchants. Um, there's just all around, it's a good industry to be in. And so you guys mentioned high risk. I hear this word a lot and I know that that's every business I do mm -hmm. apparently is in firearms. So it ends up in this category. And I understand there's a premium to pay on normal services Great. usually. Can you explain to everyone just basically what is high risk so, and what? how much more am I paying because I've been put in this category? Great question. The only reason the word high risk is in there is so other banks can decline you. That's the only reason. You are not high risk. It's actually a very low risk industry. Our chargeback ratio and our merchant portfolio is unbelievable. Our bank begs for more gun and ammo merchants because it helps diversify their portfolio. Not to say that chargebacks don't ha or won't happen. They're just not very common in the gun and ammo industry. So they aren't high risk. 
it's 100 percent political. Um, these are the same banks that, like Travis had mentioned, will will have no problem processing for the pornography industry. But they say gun and ammo is a reputational risk or they're high risk. Um, again, it's 100 percent political. And, you know, we we had tried for so many years to convince banks these merchants are good. You know, there's nothing wrong with them and and fought for these merchants. Um, but it wasn't changing anything. And that's kind of where we made that stance. It's fine. It's finally time to split. You know, unfortunately, choose a side. You want to be on the pro-America side or, you know, you have you take the chance of these big banks. Um, so so what does high risk look like as it affects my wallet? What is there a percentage associated with that? Maybe a range? Mm-hmm. How yeah. much more does it cost to be high risk than just so a normal business? There, there are two way friendly banks that still categorize mm-hmm. a gun dealer as high risk. And they do that so they can charge a premium. So you're getting higher rates and fees for being in the high risk category. So like Sarah was mentioning, the chargeback liability is really low in the firearm industry. A lot of it to do with, you know, like 4473s and stuff like that. It's not easy to uh, perpetrate fraud when it's an FFL transferred item. Uh, And if it's cardholder issue chargeback on a legitimate transaction that they ran, it's really hard for them to win a chargeback because there's all this paperwork documenting that they've received the item. They've signed that it's in good condition. Right. They've shown ID. Yeah. So when when typically when you look at risk with merchant processing, it's chargeback liability. What what percentage chance does, you know, merchant A have for having excessive chargebacks? Um, basically where the cardholder is disputing the transaction. Uh, we know for a fact that it's very low in the firearm vertical. Um, in the in the regards to risk with reputational risk, it's more of banks see it as an opportunity to generate more income by saying, oh, you're high risk. So mm-hmm. like the streaming porn places, you know, they're used to paying like five, six percent sometimes to do processing that way. With our gun dealers, um, some of the two-way friendly processors out there are going to charge them higher rates, maybe not that high, but still much higher than what we would charge because we're looking at chargeback liability. We're not looking at you know, the woke reputational risk right. that a lot and of other banks are referring to can, can if you they're just, QA friendly. Uh, quickly describe what chargeback liability is in layman's terms, just in case maybe people don't follow. Sure. So every merchant, um, when they process a transaction, the processor, which falls down to the merchant, that merchant's liable for that transaction for six months. Most merchants don't realize that your cardholders have six months to dispute a sale for any reason they want. Um, that, but that doesn't mean that they'll win. So depending on the type of chargeback that you might get, if somebody basically chargeback is someone saying, I'm not happy with it or I never purchased it. Um, so in that case, I mean, the merchant would have to supply documentation showing that they did purchase it and that's a legitimate transaction. And then it gets reversed in the merchant's favor. And again, I like I like seeing merchants become successful and providing them something that no one else could give them except for us. And then you build that trust in their merchants of yours for life. <laughs> and so not only do they um, potentially become high risk, but the other thing with our circumstance with Lionheart was just being canceled out of the yep. blue. Yep. And you don't, there's no measurement online when I log into my account of how much threat I'm under. Yep. It just looks like I'm paying my bill. This should just keep working, right? right? But people need to really understand you know, what's behind right. every system you're using. And uh, one last example, for instance, when you're using Facebook, guess what? You're paying Facebook. And in the firearms industry, you're paying them to remove our rights on Facebook. It's this big, fierce circle that if we just keep, you know, plugged into it, it's a down. And that's why we love you guys so much, because you're kind of tackling that side of the, you know, the industry. And we really, we love partnering with people that are like-minded, that have the same goals as we do, that saw that there was a need for this out there. And, um, you know, we're all in, all in. And it really is, you know, we're kind of the redheaded stepchild of credit card processing and, You know, we stick out like a sore thumb, but we're proud of it. I'm proud to be that pro-America. We support all business types. Um, You know, again, it's 100% political and it's unfortunate. People will say, you know, big bank ideology doesn't exist. Baloney. It doesn't. You're being scored. You're being, you know, you're, you're not getting proper loans because of the color of your skin. I mean, it's out there and it's it's very sad. You never thought that America would be this way. 
Um, but maybe ask, you know, our entire book of business or our FFL dealers and they've all been through it. They've all been through it. And it's not just in banking. It, from web platforms to insurance for firearms. Mm-hmm, I mean, mm-hmm. I think that our, our, our um, you know, our government actually is targeting these areas on purpose so that we're going to put them out of business so they can't sell in any way that they can. And I've over the years, I've known a few FFLs that just had had it. They've given up their FFL because it's a constant fight. Mm-hmm. And that's the last thing we need. We need more FFL. <laughs> we need more good people. Um, well, I, I absolutely agree with you. And, um, you know, the point of this whole thing is really just to help other people in the industry. Yeah. You know, after what we've been in this since 2011, I guess, uh, 13 ish years, right? Mm-hmm. And in that period of time, I can't believe how many platforms I've been canceled from, you know, legitimate business with all the backing, insured, everything. And, even our, our chat on our website, they said, we don't believe in what you guys sell. Um, and so we have to turn you off. And I thought, you're an app for chat on my website. Yeah. You know, it's amazing how it affects you at the end well, of the day. Well, that just but. proves to you all the deep state, the higher ups that are watching. Because I bet you that app probably had no problem, but they were told we can't do work with this type of business. They always say it's our board of directors yes. and we need to take care of our shareholders. Yeah. Yeah. So and that's unfortunate. So, but again, this is why we love you guys as well, DJ. I mean, I really think that we need more um, people in this space like you and I that aren't necessarily the the dealer or the manufacturer, but we're here to help, and we've recognized that there is a problem, and that we'd like to fix it. To be honest, I don't think we're ever going back. I don't think it'll. Ever, I, I I don't ever see you know Bank of America supporting gun and ammo, <laughs> right? Um, right. You know, and but there are some really good banks out there that ha- have seen what's been going on, like Old Glory Bank. They're amazing. We've partnered with Old Glory Bank. They were purchased or um, invested by John Rich, uh, Ben Carson, Larry Elder, and I believe they really got into it because they saw banks were canceling the firearms industry, and then they saw it. It evolved from there. It's conservative business. You wouldn't believe how many political, you know, um, people just running for Senate that needed a donation site couldn't get one, couldn't get processing, but the left could, you know. So it's just one of those things that choose a side. I keep saying it, um, but we'll take you. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but um, it's the truth. And really, the reason that, you know, we started Arms Directory and uh, moved Lionheart over and brought on a new wonderful partner um, was because we just saw the lack of the things that we're mm-hmm. doing in this industry. There is no focus on modern technology and modern processes through the, you know, all the payment gateways. Yep. Um, where is the Silicon Valley for the firearms industry? <laughs> I think it, it got forgotten in the late 90s. Yes. Um, yeah. So anyway, thank you guys for everything you do. Um well, and so, to, just to piggyback on that, that's why you guys are so needed. You have the brains and everything behind you. And, you know, my FFL dealers, they like building guns, you know, computers, technology. Some of it scares them. Some of my younger ones like more of the technology. But my older FFL dealers, you know, it makes them nervous. And um, to have somebody that will support their industry and help them with where they need to go. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing is that. Um, you know, we're from the industry, you know, we've designed, engineered mm-hmm. everything from the ground up and been through all these marketing processes and all the shutdowns. And I know firsthand that running any sort of firearms business is hard enough on its own. Right. And now when I go online and all I want to do is tell people that I'm having a sale and that's an impossibility. Mm-hmm. It just absolutely blows my mind. How are we supposed to do business? And something that we say all the time around here is that if we were just selling T-shirts or maybe oh, yeah. cupcakes, I could use Google Ads. I could bank with whoever we want to bank with. I could well, use web applications. Let me, let me and- tell you, DJ, that's actually changed too. So a lot of the merchants um, through one of our partners, Old Glory Bank, mm-hmm. we have merchants that sell Donald Trump shirts and they were shut down. But what is amazing is like you can go on Amazon and Jeff Bezos sells Trump shirts. So, and and they say it's because it's political, but they would do Planned Parenthood all day long. You know, a merchant 
like Planned Parenthood. So it 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 definitely from a banking standpoint, I mean, it, it, it definitely is being targeted to the right. The right is being targeted. And um, yeah, it's it, it's unfortunate. Yeah, absolutely. And and I, I just have to press on your point a little harder. Um, I really do appreciate Old Glory Bank. Mm hmm. Um, and I have money there and an account there, and I'm not being paid to say this, yep. not one cent. <laughs> I've just interfaced with those individuals. Yep. Um, I got to meet uh, Mr. Carson, and yeah, yep. I support they're, them 100%. And they're those the are, real deal. Those are mm -hmm. real people, so yep. I'll put that out there. And there's a couple other banks, um, you know, conservative banks that are coming out for this specific reason as well. They're all looking for investors. That's the cool thing. If you're out there looking to invest in a company or you know, and you don't know what to invest in on the right, there's quite a few things out there that people are, you know, looking for. So, yeah, absolutely. Yep. One thing too um, is that sets us apart from the competition is not just, you know, the no annual fees, it's all month to month. Um, but I mean, we know your margins are super thin. We don't price gouge whatsoever. In fact, um, I, I bet our competition would laugh at our profit versus theirs. <laughs> But that's okay because I'm in it for the long run. We're going to invest in our merchant, free terminals for, you know, card present atmosphere. Um, you know, we offer pin debit. A lot of processors won't offer that because it's not profitable to them. Well, my best interest is for the merchant and we want to make sure that we're taking care of you. With that said, we're kind of nervous about what's happening in the banking industry. And there's been talks about Visa and MasterCard um, wanting to start tra tracking firearm and ammo purchases. Um, originally, it was first, they were talking about doing it on the merchant side, but believe it or not, Discover actually held out and said, no, this isn't our business. I know, I was very, very impressed. Um, but then Discover caved, and now I, we think it's going to come from the issuing bank side. Um, but uh, like we're seeing a few, tr a few cards out there that are declining for no reason, and we're, we're kind of being able to put together those those banks. But my whole point is, um, so we're 10 steps ahead of the game. We're actually getting ready to launch crypto. I know crypto is a scary word. A lot of people don't understand crypto. I didn't understand it. I thought it was similar to like PayPal or where you're moving money from one coin to the next. And what I learned is the merchant can accept crypto. It turns to fiat and is in their bank account the very next day at the, the time of sale. Super easy. We're going to be offering it for integrated websites. So in store, we're going to have terminals that will actually program it or that are programmed for the crypto. And, um, you know, you never know what's going to happen with the central banking system, the tracking. Um, another good thing about the crypto is that there's absolutely no chargeback liability to the merchant and there's no way to track the funds. We are the first um, two-way friendly processor that is out there that's offering it. And um, I think now is a good time to jump on board with somebody because it's coming. It's coming to where I think people are going to want to start using more crypto. Yeah, I can absolutely see all the benefits of that. Yep. Um, and DJ, to get back to uh, your question about chargeback liability and, and what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's how likely is a transaction that a merchant runs going to come back to the bank as a chargeback. So the card card issuing bank, either on their own or through the cardholder, is disputing the transaction. So our chargeback liability is like a tenth of a percent. Um, and the one nice thing, though, even with chargeback liability being so low, uh, with the crypto that we're offering now, there's no chargeback liability. That's like a cash transaction. Once that transaction has facilitated, it's done. Um, the, the purchaser doesn't have the option to dispute the transaction. If they have an issue with it, they have to go to the merchant and work it out with them, but they can't contact a card issuing bank and be like, yeah, I'm going to dispute this transaction because, you know, it's in a different shade of green than I like. So can you describe to me what it actually looks like to use a crypto payment in my store? So is, is this in physical locations, but also on my e-commerce store? I'm Correct. just wondering, what does that look like, bare bones, simple words, just so everyone understands, you know, kind of what this animal works. is. Yeah. yeah, It's basically the same for each type, whether it's e-commerce or retail face-to-face. -face. It's uh, the interface is almost identical. Um, you're getting a QR code brought up on a screen, and then you're taking your cell phone and using your crypto wallet 
and scanning that QR code. And then it's taking the exact conversion for that time. So if it's a hundred dollar transaction, it's going to be a hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin or Ethereum. And then it's going to deposit that money into the merchant's bank account the next day, $100 worth of whatever coin it was that they used. So the merchant's doing a hundred dollar transaction and they're getting a hundred dollars put into their account the next day. Right. So, and that's all that matters. And I think that other people had problems with crypto payments. It's because if you just accept a bunch of Bitcoin and then it all tanks tomorrow. Correct. You yeah. just lost all that money, mm -hmm. right? And so I know that this is getting into it, but they'll take payments in Bitcoin, transfer them to a stable coin that's attached yes. to the U.S. dollar. Mm -hmm. That way it's keeping its value. And then when you pull it out. Well, and I think, too, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I know hardly anything about crypto, but I'm really excited about this because I did learn there are these stable coins. So it's pretty much like a prepaid debit card. You just throw some money on this coin, stable coin, and it's backed by a dollar for dollar and um, you're able to spend that way. So, and I don't think, I don't think stable coins fluctuate. They do just a little a bit. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, you know, a fraction Kind like of like if decimal. it was in the bank. Right. Or, yeah. Yeah. And, and one nice thing about the crypto processing, which we're going to see in the firearm vertical uh, a lot more uh, within the next 24 oh, months, 12 you. to 24 months, um, California and I believe um, Colorado. Colorado, yeah, just came out with legislation stating that the merchant category codes for gun dealers needs to be more detailed. Currently, the merchant category code for firearm, gun dealers, ammo dealers, sporting goods, it's under general sporting goods. And that code's 5941. So all merchant accounts have that category code, whether they're selling kayaks, fishing supplies, uh, firearms, ammunition, accessories, it's all going to go under 5941. And what their goal is, is to have that be more detailed. And then a card issuing bank can feel better about declining transactions that go to uh, a merchant category code that's specifically for FFL gun dealers or specifically for ammunition or specifically for accessories uh, for firearms. Um because we did see uh, probably 2023, um, there was a, about a six to eight month swath where we were getting a lot of calls. You know, merchant says the card holders here in the store, this card declined, but they're saying they have the funds. And then in speaking with the merchant and having the card holder contact their card issuing bank, the card issuing bank said, oh, that's a mistake. And then all of a sudden the transaction would go through. What they were doing was discriminating against the general 5941 code. Yes. So they want to make it easier to not only track those transactions, but also if the card issuing bank says, you know, we want to wash our hands clean of these transactions and not allow our cardholders to purchase at certain places, we can decline it. So California has um, put into legislation, I think it's July of 2025, um, that merchants that are gun dealers or selling ammo or accessories have to have a specific category code. That's just for California. Now, from a logistics perspective as a processor, you can't just have a merchant category code that's more finite for California. You're going to be like, well, if it's California, we just have to do it for all the other states as well. Because you can't just do that right, for California. Right. It's just it, the 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 networks aren't built to to be separated by that by state. It just, it, it doesn't work. So I have a feeling uh, the network is going to say, well, because California has done this and because Colorado has done this, we're just going to start having all these category codes uh, that are more detailed for this type of merchant. And then that's going to give the ability for a lot of people who are rightfully so afraid of tracking. So, yeah. um, you know, yeah. there's lots of, Instances where card issuing banks were reporting to uh, the FBI about where people were making purchases. Um, After J6, that yeah. happened. B, B of A, um, I don't know if you're privy to this information. The FBI didn't even reach out to Bank of America. Bank of America offered the FBI, said, here's a list of anybody that used one of our cards within the Washington, D.C. area the 5th and 6th of January 2021. Uh, for the J6. 
So they were just saying, hey, here's all the information. Yep. You can sort through yep. and they find were within all the this bad people. A couple mile radius of that day. And here you go. And that's how uh, FBI got a list of a lot of the people that were there, confronted them. Um, we just had a guy in the town next to us that was just arrest, arrested for J6 because he was there. And where that ties into crypto being more popular, um, when that starts coming out and people are nervous about making transactions for firearms, you know, legal transactions, Second Amendment protected transactions to purchase firearms, ammunition and accessories. If they're nervous that their Cardish Wing Bank is going to track the transaction or they're just afraid that they won't even approve the transaction, which happens, I've seen it, um, the crypto processing is an answer to that um, because they won't be able to discriminate. There are no MCC codes with crypto processing. It's just, it's like cash. Well, it sounds like a better and better idea the more I listen, um, and especially having firsthand experience in this and, you know, coming from the point of view of, hey, I'm doing everything right above board. Why would something ever happen to me? And then middle of the especially night, especially in an industry that's so highly regulated. Oh, yeah. I mean, these guys have the ATF watching their backs. Yeah. And right now you're dealing with an ATF. The director doesn't even own a firearm. So you, it means cross your T's, dot your I's even more. And um, it, it's. It's just unfortunate. Here's something that I bet a lot of people are, are kind of thinking about. So say that I just started, you know, a gun store and, and or maybe I'm a manufacturer, whatever it may be. Um, on the payment side, what are the a few items that you would tell them to really be particular about mm. or to watch out for? Because I didn't know to watch out for this stuff until the shoe dropped. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't want people to pay the stupid tax like yeah. I paid. Well, that brings up a great point. There are a few products in the gun and ammo industry that have been targeted for fraud. Is that what you're asking? Um, just just kind Generally? of in general, you guys see the whole picture yep. of all the different types of transactions. And I'm just wondering, as a business owner, enlighten me? There's a couple of cool things about you know how we can help you. But um, the one product that really has been targeted for fraud is Scopes and Optics. For whatever reason, I don't know if they're easier to, you know, export out of the country or you can, you know, turn them into pawn shops and get a lot of money for them. They're high end. And unfortunately, with a chargeback, the merchant not only lost the product, but they lose the money as well mm -hmm. on a stolen card. So it's like the merchant loses twice. Where I was going with that is that because we're so hands on with our merchants, if you're ever suspicious of a transaction, utilize us. We want our merchants to call. We're here on we're on their side and we want to help them. If something doesn't seem right, a lot of times it's not right. And we can help walk them through that transaction to figure out if it's fraud or, you know. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have merchants do utilize address verification. And, um, you know, sometimes that's not enough. Sometimes these fraudsters will have the billing address information, but the ship to address is different. And I can't count how many times we've saved merchants um, thousands of dollars in chargeback losses because they called us. And, you know, we looked at the transaction closely and we're like, yeah, most likely this is not a, a, a transaction where they're going to be purchasing, you know, a $2,000 thermal optic. <laughs> I mean, right. it's usually an and, 80 year old lady, you know, in yeah. Utah. You're like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's if if all the things don't add up and mm -hmm. and it looks suspicious and you know ship to and bill to address are different, you know there's been so many times that we've advised merchants don't send that product. Mm -hmm. it, this is fraud, and you know until you know that it's not, don't go there. So and a lot of times merchants will see dollar signs, especially in today's economy. Yeah. Everybody wants a big sale. Everybody wants, you know, they get excited and. Um, Again, you know, if it's fraud and, and they ship out the product, they're going to lose the money and the, the product as well. So we would rather them give us a call or give us a heads up and we can help them figure out if it's if it's good or not. Another thing um, that you probably if you're in the gun and ammo industry uh, or an FFL dealer, you've probably seen our name um, quite a bit. We have lots of endorsements. In fact, we're a gun broker and Guns America's preferred provider. So any account that's with us would also connect to those, if you wish, to sell on those sites. The uh, gun broker was really good during COVID. Um, I think everybody just started listing everything on there and it skyrocketed. So 
yeah, we and we work really hard for those endorsements. We're not going to do anything to ruin it. Kind of like with your endorsement, DJ. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. <laughs> well, and you know what? It's about partnering too. Yeah, you know, we we love sending merchants your way and vice versa. That's how that's that's how the site is going to win. So there are a lot of new you know gun dealers out there, manufacturers, whatever it may be. Now, I wish that I had someone back in the day giving me some advice, um, showing me where the icebergs were, you know, knowing the questions to ask that I didn't even know to ask. Um, Can you kind of brain dump a few good pieces of advice? Um, Absolutely. Actually, these brand new FFL dealers are my favorite because I get to teach them again, you know, with with all the roadblocks that they're going to run into. And my first question to a new FFL dealer is, did you ever think you were going to have this many problems once you got your FFL? And every single time they say, absolutely not. You know, and, and, and a lot of them will come to us feeling defeated, like this is it. You know, I'm not going to be able to stay in business. But um, from soup to nuts, we understand they got an ammo industry. You know, we talk with a lot of our merchants. We, we have recommendations for 2A friendly insurance, 2A friendly attorneys. Um, you know, we keep all of that in our, our side pocket too, you know, to help merchants. We want to be a bot. We want to be a bunch of knowledge, just like arms directory will be for the gun and ammo industry. You get a lot of questions uh, about business banking for new FFLs and, yeah. and what they should do. Yeah. What- so a, a lot of times the merchant will come to us with a business bank account already. Um, but it, it may be, you know, that they don't have one or that they're going along and all of a sudden their bank decides we're no longer gun friendly. We're shutting you down. Sometimes they don't even give them any time to get a new bank. Um, so, you know, we can we always have recommendations for that. Again, I bring up Old Glory Bank because they're the real deal. They exist because of this problem. And um, they're just a great group of people. They align with us. I, um, I like working with them. And... I, I would definitely suggest Old Glory Bank, but there's some other good ones out there too. Credit unions are usually pretty good. Um, usually. Sometimes credit unions, if you look into them, they're actually owned by some of the bigger woke banks. So y- you do want to look into those a little bit because you can find yourself in a woke bank kind of situation, with, even with a credit union. But most of the time, mm. well, what gets pretty good. To me is a lot of these um, woke banks who are run by like BlackRock and some of these other investment companies – Take a look at some of the large ammo manufacturers out there. You know, Fink is against guns, right? But he invests in ammo. He invests in firearm companies because he knows that there's money there. So they're hypocrites, you know. And um, again, it just it's so frustrating because they'll push their banks to say no to a legitimate regulated industry, but they'll be fine with pornography and stuff that really is yeah. distasteful and should be a reputational risk. And another thing, when, you know, a bank brings up a reputational risk, I've always fought the idea, how is it a reputational risk? No one knows who you process with, you know, so and you're not allowed to tell people who you're processing for. So how is that a reputational risk? It's basically their board of directors or, you know, they just don't believe in that side of the fence. No, so. Branding optics risk. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep, exactly. So yeah, so what are what are another few items that we can help some you know starting out businesses? Yeah, so um, a lot of them ask questions like you know I don't I, they can't decide on who they want to go to for hosting their website or or this or that, and that can be a minefield as well. Yeah. Um, you know, WordPress is really popular. Uh, WooCommerce is a shopping cart um, as long as it's not hosted by WordPress. WordPress is not firearm friendly for hosting, mm-hmm. but if you have your own host, you can be on the WordPress platform with a WooCommerce shopping cart. And most of our gun dealers that have their own websites, that's how they're doing it. Um, otherwise, you know, you got to look into it. You want to stay away from, you know, some of the cookie cutter websites because, you know, you'll find, yeah, they might let you build your website, but they've only got two or three processors that they'll allow you to work with. And none of those are two way friendly. So you got to ask those questions ahead mm-hmm. of time. Um, you know, and like POS systems, you know, you want to make sure you're working with a POS system that's gun friendly. And if anybody ever had questions on, you know, what are the top three POS systems, they're welcome to call our office. We really like Connected Data Solutions. It's one of our top POS partners. Um, They're great. They do range software as well as retail POS. And 
Um, there's just a whole lot of options out there for gun dealers that don't know necessarily what those options are. Well, the biggest thing about this industry is they want somebody they can trust. Once you have their trust and they know that you're going to steer them in the right direction, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll stick with you forever. They're, the firearms industry, and I'll even say the conservative businesses out there, they're very loyal. They're good people. They're what America was built upon. And, you know, there's just so many changes nowadays that's going on. I, I think there's going to be a market for nostalgia. I think there's going to be a market for that hands-on touch, the, um, you know, people answering their phones. We have some of our competitors that are all about integration. You'll never talk to anyone live on the phone. You get email notifications. And that's just not who we are. You know, we want to build that relationship. And that's important. And um, like I said, I think there's a market for it out there. Yeah, people just want to communicate yep. with actual humans yes. again, right? Yes. Every time I call an 800 number, I just fear, okay, what does this menu look like? You know, how long am I going to sit on hold? Do they have that callback feature so I can just enter my number yep. and forget about you guys? Want to hear something cool about 800 numbers that I learned? Yeah. So, and you know how 800 numbers, like if you have an 800 number that shows how long you've been in business, because 800 numbers haven't existed for many, many years. There were the 888s then the 866s, then the 877s. So Mike, the owner of Electronic Transfer, had taught me that. You know, he's very proud that he still has an 800 number. Kind of shows longevity. So I'd love to know your advice on some different people to trust. Well, this is, building the merchant's trust is what we do first. Because, again, they've been told no. Half the time when I'm doing a sale or I'm talking with a merchant, I'll even get merchants to say, yeah, Sarah, I've heard it all before. You know, just... I, you all, you know, it, hidden fees or you all tell me that you're gun friendly and then you shut me down later. And this is where I like to really prove to the merchant we are what we say we are. And from soup to nuts, we have recommendations. Travis and his team is more on the technical side and terminals and what works good for what um, devices and integration. But we, for example, every single merchant of ours is told about you guys you know, that to go claim their business with arms directory, that anything that will make that merchant successful is what we're there to help them with, whether it be recommending a bank, recommending platforms to sell on, um, you know, even gun broker, Guns America. We have lots of endorsements out there and we work really hard for those and, you know, maintain good relationships with our partners. Who do you think, Travis? Uh, yeah, I think. You know, having a bank that's going to stand by you for your, you know, your general banking and your checking account is, you know, step one. Foundational. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, us, a processor that's not going to, you know, send you a letter in the mail that you may or may not read that says, hey, you got 30 days. You need, you need to find a new home because we don't want if to process anymore. If they even give you that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and then you've got yourself in a position where all of a sudden you find that you've been cut off on a weekend and you lose all those credit card sales and you're stuck with cash. Um, our merchants aren't put in those situations. Um, some of our partners like, you know, Gun Broker is great. Uh, Guns America, you know, we also work with them as well. And I've noticed that they have like the buyers and sellers on those platforms are a little different. So they've kind of got their own group of people. And, and I always tell merchants, I'm like, Hey, if you've got items on inventory that are sitting in the shelf, go list it on the auction sites. It's not going to hurt anything. Worst case that, you know, it doesn't sell. And if it does, then you just pay the auction site fees and you've sold a product. You Can know? I one up you really quick? Yeah. Just claim your listing on arms directory yep. and add the product for free. And it will sit there in perpetuity for free. Until it's that's right. You Just got, link how many to it. how many products do you guys allow a merchant to list for free? So yeah, that depends on the tier. Um, I believe in the free tier, it, it's only you know one or two. Mm -hmm. It's something very basic like that. As you go up, you're allowed to put more information sure. in, so you can be found better in search, list more products. But um, I recommend at least taking advantage of that because with Gun Broker, I mean, I've been there trying to sell our products. Guess what? I just paid, you know, 30, 40 bucks to sell this pistol. That was most of my margin. Yep. On top of that, the guy that clicked on my link, guess what? He just said, oh, no, that was an accident. That ended my auction. Mm. Now I have to relist it and start all over again. And then I can, you know, maybe get yeah. about a billion more emails. So 
just saying there's something with just list it out there for free and just let it sit there because everything on your back shelves, there's someone in America that is dying for that yeah. little part covered in yeah. dust, right? It just needs visibility. How many how many users do you guys have on Arms Directory now? Well, members or users? Both. So traffic, I can't quite co- quote those new numbers. You know, we're... We're pushing the millions now. You wow. Know? It's up wow. into that category. Now, registered members, that's a smaller, tight-knit mm-hmm. group of thousands. Yeah. Um, and it works its way up from there. And every day, I I go back and look at analytics with our CTO, and it's a drastically bigger number than that's it was awesome. yesterday. So, um, you know, we have no sales or yep. advertising, and we just kind of keep moving along. So, uh, thank everyone out there for supporting us. Um but really getting it back to, I want to provide value for the former me, basically, that was, you know, starting my first FFL. Um, are there any other points around payment processing that, you know, they're going into this fairly blind? And that's not just payment processing. That's payment processing in the firearms industry. Right. And most people don't know that that's a different sport, you know. Just anything, a merchant can count on anything that they're looking for recommendations for, even point of sale systems. We know everything that's gun friendly out there, what platforms are, what platforms aren't. And we can help point you in the right direction. Um, like I said, we, you know, we partner with the best compared to our competitors. Um, I truly feel like the ones that we've picked are, you know, the best in the bunch. And, um, and we strategically picked the partners that we work with. And, and here's another thing, too. I'll never talk bad about my competition because they are gun friendly. And that's important. And there's well, Anything else you feel like you really want to mention that differentiates you guys that we haven't touched on yet? I would say um, just that since, you know, 15 years we've been in the gun and ammo industry. And, and not only are we going to continue to go into that industry, but we're branching off to be more of that pro-America. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, because we already are pro-America, but... There is, like I said, it's not just gun and ammo anymore. It's conservative business. And so we're going to continue partnering with like-minded banks, like-minded uh, business types, and continue to give them, you know, a solution. Yeah. And, and I would add that, you know, if you're wanting to get with a processor that's going to treat you like a human being, whether you're a small volume merchant yep. or one that's doing two to three million a month, we're your, we're your one-stop shop for that because- you know, we're going to pick up the phone and see what you need. You're not going to get routed to a call center somewhere where they don't even know who you are. They have to look you up. You know, we, we know I've got merchants that I've been dealing with for over 15 years. And when they call, they don't have to say their name because I recognize <laughs> their voice. Yeah. yeah. So we, we like those kinds of relationships and we like that small town mm-hmm. vibe and with customer service. And we're going to continue to offer that because – Frankly, our, our merchants really like it. They, they tell us this is one of the things that we love about you. And, and I think, too, one thing that I, I really admire about Travis and his dad is that we could grow into that huge mega processor, but then we'd become that huge mega processor. And they're very slow and methodical about who we partner with, like I said, and, and our growth. Yes, we, I would love to take on everybody, but we need, we're very um, – conscious about being able to support the ones that we already have too it's not just about boarding them it's about keeping them and you know if you don't lock them into a contract which we don't you know they they can leave at any time well, then you just have to perform every month exactly. otherwise they're gone yeah. exactly and that's that's what we like to brag about our merchants don't leave and we don't have to lock them into a contract so um sarah yeah. always says if you don't like me you can divorce me <laughs> <laughs> i've been di- I've hardly been divorced. No, nope, <laughs> never happens. You know, but I have to say, that's the reason that, you know, we've all taken the time to sit down with each other today is because we genuinely understand and yep. approve of each other's businesses. We like each other. And I find that I I crave that sense of kind of... Camaraderie. Yeah, and, yeah exactly. Yeah. I, I'm just so tired of calling something, getting no answers and, you know, kind yep. of treated like garbage in a time where, guess what? My website just went down. We're losing all of our yes. revenue. Yeah. Can, can I please speak to someone, right? Yep. Yeah. And, and, and they, to make it worse, when you go to fire them, you're hit with a cancellation fee. Right, right. It's just crazy. Insult to injury. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Or, you know, there is a, uh, 
there are some people that have tried to jump on the firearm train and, you know, processors that kind of got into the space and they, they realized they couldn't price gouge merchants. You know, they thought, hey, maybe these guys don't have a lot of competition. We can raise their rates. The gun and ammo industry can't afford high rates. That's that's the hard part. And that's why we really push them down into that low risk category because they're not high risk. We're not falling for it. And they should be given low risk rates. And um, we make sure. Thank you guys for doing that. At the end of the day, with Arms Directory's goal is to become the centralized point, mm -hmm. um, kind of the, the infrastructure of what's driving the firearms industry. You know, the different tools and resources you can actually rely upon. You yeah. Know. We, well, we just really appreciate you guys um, inviting us for this podcast because we love getting our name out there. Um, it, if you want to go to our website, it's electronictransfer.com. I'm Sarah. This is Travis. Our phone number is 1-800-757-5453. We are in Spokane, Washington. Don't hold that against me. <laughs> 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 I usually tell people we use Seattle as target practice. <laughs> so I won't take offense to thank that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you guys once again so much for taking the travel time because you traveled to be here in our studio today. Um, we appreciate you and everything you're doing 100%. We couldn't thank you anymore Ditto. or recommend you anymore. <laughs> um, so anytime that we at Arms Directory are talking about a payment gateway, it is electronic transfer. Thank you. Um, we're going to plug electronic transfer into our entire ecosystem. Uh, everything we do forward, we're, we're fully in. Thank you for having us on, you guys. Yep, absolutely. And once again, you can find them at electronictransfer.com or you can find us at armsdirectory.com. We'll see you soon.